Some of the greatest photographers of all time have been street photographers. And I think this sentence gets to the core of what street photography really is. Decisive moment and pure emotion, not perfection. That's a quote from today's guest as we hit the streets with Valerie Jardin on this episode of Behind the Shot. Hi, once again, welcome to Behind the Shot. I'm your host, Steve Brazel. This is the podcast where we try and get inside the mind of great photographers by taking a closer look behind one of their shots from conception to completion and all the challenges and yes, the stories too that happen in between. And today's guest is one I've actually wanted to have on from the day I started this podcast. She is, uh, I, I'm not even sure where to start because the, the list is so long. She is a world-renowned street photographer. In fact, well, you know what? We're going to get into your credentials here in just a second. Valerie Jardin, welcome to Behind the Shot. Hi, Steve. Thank you for having me. It I'm is sorry my it took so long to get our schedules to coordinate. Yeah, it's so hard to, to coordinate everything. And you travel way more than me, which makes it a little bit more difficult. <laughs> yes. But you travel for really good reason. So let's talk about you for just a second. I say that you're a world-renowned street photographer, and I put you actually in the list with the best street photographers of all time. But, oh. but not only are you great at it, you're recognized for it. For example, Street Hunters, 2015 and 2016, they ranked you as one of the top 20 most influential street photographers today. Now, that's not a little statement because, as you know, but in case the viewers don't, street photography, I think, is probably more popular today than it has been in years. Am I right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I think uh, it's uh, it's growing. It's growing every day. It's growing all the time. Yeah. For and all part the good of it, and all I the think, bad. <laughs> I think part of it is because there's a lot of people with cell phones that yeah. can take, you know, it's it's the camera that you have with you. And people are doing even amazing street photography with with cell phones and with apps like Hi Hipstamatic and uh, where they get that high contrast or black and white type feel that gives that traditional street photography type feel. But along with being a street photographer. You've taken that knowledge that you have and you've turned it into podcasting. You have your own podcast, Hit the Streets with Valerie Jardin. Mm -hmm. uh, and then wh where can they get that, by the way? Anywhere podcasts are oh, sold, yeah, right? Yeah, and anywhere, <laughs> exactly. Just like they could get Street Focus before, except this one is uh, is not on the network anymore, but it's Hit the Streets with Valérie Jardin on iTunes, Google Play, and, you know, through the web. and Google All the my normal name, places that you get your favorite yep. podcast. So if you're mm -hmm. getting this podcast, make sure that you get Valerie's as well. You're an educator. Uh, you're at lynda.com. How many classes do you have at Lynda? Oh, actually, I just did the one and um, kind of waiting. I'm exploring different uh, different ways to, to teach through that, you know, the type of, just like Lynda used to do. They don't do as much of those uh, hands-on, on-the-street type of uh, classes anymore. So that's the part I want to do. I'm not but really yours interested is still in up there. Oh, yes, it is. It was a storytelling um, in, um, on the streets of San Francisco. Yeah. And then you do your worldwide workshops and mm -hmm. photo walks. Well, you do workshops everywhere, U.S., France, Australia. So almost anywhere somebody is near, if they want to do a street photography workshop uh, with Valerie, all that information is on your website. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, I, I teach about nine to ten workshops a year. Some are full weeks and some are weekends and some a few one day workshops that I'm that I add more at the last minute, but um, mostly week long and weekends, which is why you're traveling so much. You're also <laughs> a popular speaker. You were at um, out of Chicago Photo Expo Plus. I need to get to out of Chicago someday. I hear it's really, really good. It's and good. you are an author. So you've got how many books now? Uh, four, um, three eBooks and uh, one uh, print book that was published with Focal Press New York. Do you, you don't have a copy near you, do you, of of your print book? I, I always do. There it is. Street photography. There we go. Creative, uh, creative vision behind the lens. Yep. And where can they get that? Can they get that on Amazon or anything yep, like that? Absolutely. Yes, it's uh, available all over the world on Amazon and doing really well. I'm I'm quite pleased with the the reviews. Have been really good and. Uh, it's a different way of teaching, you know. It's uh, kind of in line with uh, with your show, where we talk about the 
the creative vision behind the photograph. And, which is uh, which is really what I want to get into because you picked the shot today, and I love the reason you told me that you picked it. Oh, oh, you know, before we do that, one other thing: you're a Fujifilm X photographer. Mm-hmm. How long has that been? Uh, probably three, at least three years now. I don't know. I the years kind of zoom by. Is <laughs> that mostly already, you? You only yeah. shoot Fuji? Uh, yes, I do. And actually, I didn't switch because Fuji. Uh, Asked me, I became a Fuji user from a Canon user, uh, ditched the DSLR, uh, it must be four years ago at least now, and um, and then Fuji noticed, and then they came to me and asked me to be a, a Fuji X photographer. Um, so it's been at least three years, if not four, yeah. And I, and I what, only shoot Fuji. what body Fuji do you normally shoot for the Fuji? I shoot the X100 f now i started with the s then the t then the f so it's a it's a rangefinder type camera since we're on video i can show it uh, oh nice and it has a fixed 23 millimeter 35 equivalent uh f- focal length that's all you have you can't take it off and um and that's why when you said earlier that there are a lot of street photographers that just use their their phones well that's because you know you you don't let the gear come in the way and it's all about vision and i think limiting yourself to one focal length is really really good to your to and your and 35 millimeters is Perfect. such a nice viewpoint actually from mm-hmm. a from a image viewing point of view right not just from a photography art point of view but from the viewer's point of view so yeah, let's talk everything. about this shot you've got okay when when we were emailing back and forth and i said you know your body of work is vast right you've got mm-hmm books literally worth of photography i said there's got to be a shot that you kind of want to talk about understanding the concept of the show and you sent me this shot new york city embrace nyc embrace what was this shot with that body uh yes i've that's the only camera i use really uh i would say for 99 percent of the time i have a couple other fuji cameras but uh, i have one that's waterproof so <laughs> sometime if it's really a downpour and i don't mind getting my camera wet i'll use my other camera but yes this is what i use all the and time. and this is i'm guessing since it's new york city embrace nyc embrace this is a subway in new york city is that where this yeah. is yes that was um oh let me it actually you can see it on the picture and now i don't have it in front of me of course but uh it was at one of uh, it's unions i want to say union square but maybe i'm uh yeah, Union Square. That's it. Union Square Station in New York. So, uh, yes. It so was, as, as uh, we're looking subway. at this shot, there's so much happening in this picture. Mm-hmm. You've got and so much happening from a classic photography point of view. You've got the couple embracing in the middle. You've got not only leading lines of the handrails on the sides leading down the corridor towards them. Right. Classic composition rule. You've even got a railing in the middle that they are standing at the end of pointing mm-hmm. right at them. Yep, that was intentional. Which was going to be my question. So you positioned yourself at the end of this rail. Did you, I'm not a street photographer. I, I would love to be. I just, I'm really don't understand a lot about it, right? Mm-hmm. Um, when you position yourself at the end of this rail, do you then stand there? and wait for the scene to unfold itself in front of you? Yeah, so this is a classic setting a stage type of shot. I mean, there's so many ways to shoot street photography and I I go in depth when I teach and and in my books, uh, there's the standard way that when people think of street photography, like you just walk down the street and you react to something that's happening in front of you. I mean, that's probably the classic way to shoot street. Uh, Anything that's out of the ordinary, it could be a color, it could be the the way the light hits someone, it could be uh, just a, a really interesting subject any anything uh so that's kind of a standard way to shoot street photography another way is to do street portraits where you actually have an interaction with your subject you can do a more minimalist approach of uh just incorporating the human element in the urban landscape you can do abstract and then there is a, a another way is finding a, a the space that either a billboard that can actually tell a story if the right subject enters the frame or here i found this this perfect frame of the subway and I, and and 
in New York, you really don't have to wait a long time for somebody really interesting to come through your frame. So I... Boy, I, that's an understatement, isn't it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, it's, I mean, of all places, it's like a street photographer's uh, best favorite playground. So, and U- Union Square is one of those stations where you'll have just people of all walks of lives. I mean, some... Re- and I've... Even that, that day when I was waiting, uh, I, I photographed some really amazing looking people, really, you know, people that they're, they're, I don't know where they're going, but the way they're dressed and all the jewelry and it's just amazing. And so it's, it's eye candy for the photographer. And so, um, so then you, you find a spot and you put, like I put intent into this composition because I found my stage. So I, I saw the railing, right? Splitting the, the stairs going down and the sta- people going up. So I figure, well, I'm just going to plant myself there for a few minutes uh, and then see what happens. Um, so so it's you're, really is about, your camera sitting on the rail? Yep, the the camera is, I mean, literally resting on it. I, I, I use that a lot because I like a lot of foreground and I like that out of focus line in the middle. Um, that was intentional because I always, you don't want to repeat yourself. You want to find different ways to make a shot interesting. So diff- different compositions. And uh, and I wanted that, that perfect framing, you know, the symmetry so he, in the shot. Here's what I, I, I want to understand better about street photography. Mm-hmm. So you're standing there I like the way you described the various ways that you can do street photography, because this one is you picked a pre-done canvas Mm -hmm. and then you let the motion in that canvas paint the picture for you in front of you. But I'm picturing you standing at the end of this rail with your camera on the ledge on, on the railing. Are you are you standing there? plain as day with a camera are you Mm -hmm. trying to be covert because that's one of the biggest fears people have right is i'm going to get seen so how do you what do you know what i mean well i don't bring the camera to my eye uh for two reasons you know you're more invisible if you don't bring the camera to your face obviously my camera is completely silent it's very unobtrusive unobtrusive people don't even you know, take it seriously because it's so small. And uh, people think it's an old film camera most of the time anyways, because it has that retro look. Uh, so you're not you're not intimidating. And um, and I pretty much stay invisible. I mean, the camera is I, I'm, I'm not I mean, I'm behind it because I'm holding it. But it, it, it's it's uh, at that point it was below, you know, it was uh, not quite at hip level, but pretty close. And and the reason why I never bring the camera to my eye, the other reason is because everything at eye level is very boring and very static. And I think if you use the LCD or like I know my focal length so well that I I barely even need to use my LCD or viewfinder to get the shot because I pretty much know what I can my you, reach. You knew what you would get I, in I the frame with this shot. I know that focal length so well. And that's really an advantage of of the consistency in the focal length that you use as a street photographer. You're going to work a lot faster uh, if, you, if you're consistent with the focal length. And, and, um, and using your iPhone, for example, is perfect because you, you're working within that frame and those limitations. So that that you'll move a lot faster, you'll work a lot faster because you're not going to zoom in and out. You just know where you need to stand to get the shot you envision. And so um, so I, I, I was ready. I wasn't expecting this to happen, obviously. No one can predict. But I'm very, I'm, I'm very, um, I put the bar pretty high. I'd rather not get a shot at all than get a mediocre shot. I, I go for really something um, that's unusual that I haven't done that I haven't seen before. Uh, so because people were coming in and out, the people forget you're there. I mean, I was standing there, but they don't you know, people don't even pay attention. Um, and so but I was you standing couldn't there. Uh, you could not have prearranged this shot any better. I oh, mean, I, that's what's fascinating <laughs> to me, because think about this for a minute, right? Let's let's ready. say you were doing this on a movie set. And what would the director want? Well, he'd want separation of faces. Okay, the people that are walking do not overlap their faces, right? Separation of bodies, they stagger left to right. There's only one person on the right so that you can clearly see that it's a female. With, and and the couple lined up dead center. 
the odds of them being dead yeah, center. I know. Well, the thing is, it's all about preparation. It's about vision, preparation, and then there is serendipity. And serendipity will play a huge part. And that's the part that's so exciting because you have no control. And that's what makes street photography so difficult. And that's why I think it's important to um, to not settle. You know, I'd rather not settle I'd, I'd rather not get the shot than settle for an okay shot. Right. right. Uh, and so I was ready. Uh, something was going to happen that I could not have predicted, but I was ready. My finger is on the trigger. I don't let my camera go to sleep when I'm in an environment like that. So I'm abs- I'm, I'm ready to get the shot, whatever happens. And uh, I was mostly looking for people coming in, coming out of the subway, some interesting looking individuals because it's New York. And then all of a sudden I saw this couple um embrace halfway through i saw the surprise because obviously they hadn't seen each other for a long time it looks and then one was coming up the other one was rushing down and then they embraced she removed her cap and i grabbed i grabbed about three shots and um and then i waited because then they started talking so i thought hmm i wonder if i have a better shot even cuz until until you see it on the I, I knew from the back of my camera that I had something, but until you see it, you know, on your on your screen, on your computer, you know, you just keep your fingers crossed. I knew I had something very special. And um, and then I thought, well, they're probably going to embrace again when they said goodbye. And I waited, but it was the moment was already gone I, I it was so spontaneous and and the smile i remember when she she before they embraced she quickly removed her her cap and uh and that genuine it, there's so much emotion and so much joy the smile on nev- her face yeah exactly and is the picture it's that moment and and it to me that is what street photography is it's not about perfection granted i had i had a good stage i had a I had a good composition, but you can't yeah, exactly. You could never even direct something like that and get it in. And in, in that, I mean, you probably would need, need to take a lot of takes. Yeah, and exactly. It's and, and you just emotion. said a really it's real great life. thought that needs to be emphasized. It's not about perfection with street mm-hmm. photography. And you sent me when you sent me this picture, I made the comment that you, you said, I want to talk about this picture because it encompasses what street photography is. And you said the following line, and I have it in my notes in quotes <laughs> because it's that powerful, right? It's about a decisive moment and pure emotion, not perfection. Uh-huh. That yeah. line right there, that one sentence sums up street photography yep. because when I first saw this, I was going to ask you, you know, in street photography, do you really pay attention to and worry about background objects? For example, let's mm-hmm. say hypothetically, one of the faces walking out overlapped another face. They don't, which makes this really golden. But would that would that be something that you were concerned with? And obviously, if you had two frames and one of them they didn't, you'd pick that one. Well, but it wouldn't it ruin it, right? It, it well it. There is you have to make compromises because you have no control over what's happening. You only have control over your over your gear and your vision and you don't have control over what people are going to do. So you need to you're going to have to compromise. Really will all the elements come into place that happens in the lifetime of a photographer if that happens five times you know it's it's awesome because you have so little control you have no control so sometimes it's you know it's the story and sometimes you know the light won't be very good or the backdrop won't be very good but then you have this really powerful emotion this really amazing story so the story will always win uh that said um you know, other times it's all about the light and then the subject may not be so interesting, but the light is so good that so you know, it's more giving. When you position yourself here, you're mm-hmm. aware of the light at that moment. I mean, when you're choosing because you don't really have no control, right? You're choosing your canvas area. You just don't have any control of what unfolds, but you have choice on the canvas. So yep. when you pick a spot like this, are you thinking in your head? compositionally this is golden this is this is a beautiful uh a canvas or and or are you also thinking and the way the light is coming into the tunnel versus out of the tunnel is a nice compliment well um 
at that point, it was more about the composition than the light. And, you know, that's the thing. Sometimes when you have a maze, and really on the street, there is no bad light. You just have to, you know, there's easy light, you know, beginning of the day, end of the day, and there is more challenging light. But I love the harsh shadows and the, the midday sun. So um, so some, it's really about working with the light you have. And here it was, it was uh, towards the end of the day, February in New York. You know, the light was, it was already really getting dark in the city because you have all those tall buildings. So it doesn't matter how, you know, it could be mid-afternoon and the sun is already hidden behind the tall buildings. And so it was more about emotion and and facial expression. When you don't have spectacular light to work with, you're going to have to work, you're going to have to pay more attention to other things on the street. So um, so that's why I, when I position myself, my myself there i said okay i have a really good backdrop interesting people coming in and out i probably still have a, a you know a half hour left of of um of of decent light to work with and um and let's see what happens so again it was all about getting within that frame and and not settling lucky for me this happened this will never happen again this is which is a the shot brilliance of, of it actually right and that's, you to you, me that's you, the yeah you captured really it goes back to that sentence i'm telling you that sentence is so good because that i'm gonna is, have to write it down <laughs> that is street photography it's it's in the email thread that is street photography at its core yeah this is a decisive moment with emotion now you could have a decisive moment that also was unemotional mm -hmm. it's a decisive moment with pure emotion not perfection but here's the question i hear all the time on street photography and you mentioned earlier when you were listing the different methods that you can do street photography mm -hmm. that it could be a shape an abstract um a billboard that meant something when somebody enters the frame or a color or a color but street photography you shoot color and most real street photographies do shoot color street photographers but 90 percent of the time Street photography tends to be presented presented as a black and white. Why? Well, actually, I, I make the decision in camera because I shoot JPEG only for limitation reasons. I feel that um, it's, it's part of the creative process and it's a decision that you need to make before you press the shutter. Whether you shoot raw or not, actually, it doesn't matter. You should always know whether your subject is going to be color or black and white. And so uh, I shoot I shoot, um, I shoot, shoot JPEG. I make the decision um, in camera. And uh, the subject, it, sometimes the subject is all about color. I really let the subject make that decision for me. If the color distracts from the subject, then black and white makes more sense. So if that, a, that's your deciding factor yeah. for going black and white is yeah, it's it's more difficult actually to shoot color because you have all those distractions that can distract from your subject. So color street photography is actually more difficult. Uh, I shoot more and more color because I love classic chrome and I have classic chrome in camera film simulation, which I really love. So when I set out with I, I make the changes in camera. I don't shoot necessarily all day in black and white, all day in color. I will change throughout the day. Um, but um, black and white, it does give it a timeless feel, but it's a lot more, it's often more strategic than that. It, it removes color distraction. So your eye will stay on the, on the faces versus being distracted by, you know, imagining somebody walking up and down the stairs with a purple coat. Well, that would grab your attention away from the young couple. And, um, and New York being such a colorful environment, I, I decided when I stood in front of those steps to be in black and white only because it was all about capturing facial expressions, whether it was people coming up from the subway or here, you know, this this special moment of the embrace and and any color would distract from the face. And Which, I, I don't want you to tr I don't want I want you to travel a little bit to explore the frame, but I want you to always come back to that. The smile on the woman's face. And you I don't just want touched on something. The, the episode I did with Trey Ratcliffe, mm -hmm. which was a fascinating episode, right? This, this Trey is literally a brilliant guy. 
And there was a moment where we got into talking color theory and how he engineers kind of color theory into his images, because if you're looking at a green and then your eye goes to a blue, you've got kind of a green filter over your eye from having looked at the green and your eye wants places to rest. And that's really it, that your eyes can get burned out on chasing different colors around an image. And this kind of strips that reality away down to its bare essence of that emotion. But if you shoot JPEG in camera, I am curious, are you doing any post to these images? If so, what what do you use software wise? Barely. Uh, I'm still using Lightroom, although I'm exploring other things. Uh, but Lightroom and I have the five second rule per picture. So I spend very, very little time. If it's uh, if it's classic Chrome, I really won't do anything to my pictures. Uh, the black and white. Occasionally, I will add a tiny bit of clarity, a tiny bit of contrast, and that's it. Um, because five I second really rule? Look. What do you mean five second oh, rule? You, you I, won't I never spend, spend more than more five, five seconds on an on image? A picture. That's right. Yeah. It's street photography. You know, I it, there's nothing you can do to the picture to make to, to tell to to make it a it's either going to be a story, a good picture, or it's not going to be a good picture. It is absolutely the, the post processing is only going to make a good picture into a slightly better one. It's not going to make a bad one into a good one. There's nothing yeah, I yeah. can do. So I, I go very quickly through. I, I don't shoot a ton. Uh, so I, I go through my pictures with a finger on the X. And I usually keep only three or four pictures. And oh, that's the one that I'm going to spend five seconds on. I'm in and out. Seriously. Do you crop it all or, or it's very little, the crop, whatever I, the crop was in camera? I no, I will crop as necessary if I need to straighten um, verticals, but that's it. You know, I and that's one thing that I again trying to get it done in camera is part of of growing in the craft. And I think, I mean, I I think it's it's so amazing that we have those tools that are so easy and can save the shot. And I will occasionally crop because I can't get any closer. Obviously, I'm at 23 millimeter. Well, and like um, you say, your camera sitting on this rail, it's yeah. entirely possible you didn't realize the camera was not level, at, exactly. which, which would give you that weird, shouldn't these people be sliding? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sliding right off. <laughs> yeah. But but very little. Uh, I think the more you you are you should always uh, press the shutter without the without even thinking of the cropping tool. You should always try to get it right, and and, and that's really the way I do things. So not only I think it it um, I I I grow in the craft that way, and also I. Um, I spend less time in post processing, which is awesome because that's my least favorite thing. Mm. Uh, I love to see my pictures on a 27 inch uh, screen, but uh, again, I'm very quick at at uh, making at getting rid of pictures. And and sometimes people tell me, well, what if someday we have the software that can you know turn a, a blurry picture into a sharp one? I'm like, well, yeah, but what does that say about my me as a photographer? I didn't do my job right. I don't want. I don't need anybody to you know, save, save my bad picture. You know, I didn't do it right in the first place. So what's yeah, the we, point? We want to so, hone our craft. As exactly. It were. So, it's about the merit uh, behind the photograph. Too. Exactly. It, I don't care well, what people well, think. I care what I think. So if people want to find out, first of all, by the way, you need to check out Valerie's podcast. All right. Because if, if this did not give you a sense of why you want to try street photography, it's one of the most challenging types of photography. I think that you'll find with, you know, as she says, she's lucky if she gets four shots, your hit ratio is going to be lower. But boy, mm -hmm. those hits can just make your 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 emotions soar. Absolutely. If people want to find out more about Valerie, where do they go? Uh, my website, ValerieJardin.com. And then from there, they can find the books and they find me on uh, pretty active on my page, Valerie Jardin Photography on Facebook and Instagram, Valerie Jardin as well. Mm -hmm. And Twitter, uh, let's see. Yeah, your... Twitter, I do too. Valérie Jardin, it's all under my name. And if you Google it, you'll find it up on yeah, the top. Yeah, Instagram, now, you're but... pretty much in every... And, and all the links, I'll have all the links on the blog post yeah. that's associated with this episode at thisweekinphoto.com. You can always find them there. Oh, by the way, I forgot to mention, you're also uh, a contributor to Digital Photography School. I used to. I haven't written for them for a long time, but mm. I wrote... Over a hundred articles. Yeah, there's a lot of articles still mm -hmm. up there because I was browsing They're through them, getting ready for today. <laughs> uh, and you have your own 
blog as well at yeah. uh, valeriejardin.wordpress.com. Uh, yeah. So go find Valerie. Give her some love. Thank you. Download her podcast and subscribe to it because trust me, it's just that. Good. Valerie, thank you so much. I'm so glad thank I finally you. got you on. <laughs> I know. It's, it's fun. Yeah, I love it. Thank you. Well, again, thank you. And to everybody, thanks for all the support for the Behind the Shot podcast. Everything you've done over our first year has been great. We're into year number two now. I've got some great guests lined up for you. My name is Steve Brazel. I'm your host. You can always go to thisweekinphoto.com. Click the Behind the Shot link, find all the past episodes. And of course, you can contact me through the contact page there as well. Thanks again, and we'll see you soon. Hey there, I'm Frederick Van Johnson. Thanks for checking out the TWIP Network on YouTube. If you'd like to keep up to date with the shows we're putting out, be sure to click subscribe. And while you're at it, give us a thumbs up. You can also subscribe on thisweekinphoto.com where you'll find lots of other great photography shows. Thanks for watching the TWIP Network on YouTube.